war. Governor. Um, your plan is a white flag of surrender in Iraq, and that is not what our troops need to hear today, that's for sure, and it's not what our nation needs to be able to count on. You guys oppose the surge. The surge works. Barack Obama still can't admit the, the surge works. We'll know when we're finished in Iraq, when the Iraqi government can govern its people, and when the Iraqi security forces can secure its people. And our commanders on the ground will tell us when those conditions have been met. And Maliki and Talib Talibani also, in working with us, are knowing, again, that we're getting closer and closer to that point, that victory that's within sight. Now, you said regarding Senator McCain's uh, military policies there, Senator Biden, that you supported a lot of these things. In fact, you said that uh, you wanted to run, you'd be honored to run with him on the ticket. And that's an indication, I think, of some of the support that you had, at least until you became the VP pick here. Um, <laughs> You also said that Barack Obama was not ready to be Commander-in-Chief. And I know, again, that you opposed the move that he made to try to cut off funding for the troops, and I respect you for that. I, I don't know how you can defend that position now, but um, I, I know that you know, especially with your son in the National Guard, and I have great respect for your family also, and the honor that you show our military. Um, Barack Obama, though, another story there. Anyone, I think, who can cut off funding for the troops after promising not to, that's another story. Senator Biden. John McCain voted to cut off funding for the troops. Let me say that again. John McCain voted against an amendment containing $1,600,000,000 that I had gotten to get MRAPs, those things that are protecting this, uh, the governor's son and pray God my son and a lot of other sons and daughters. He voted against it. He voted against it, the funding because he said the amendment had a timeline in it to end this war, and he didn't like that. But let's get straight who has been right and wrong. John McCain and Dick Cheney said, while I was saying we would not be greeted as liberators, we would not, this war would take a decade, not, the, uh, not a day, not a week, not six months. We would not be out of there quickly. John McCain was saying the Sunnis and Shias got along with each other without reading the history of the last 700 years. John McCain said there'd be enough oil to pay for this. John McCain has been dead wrong. I love him. As my mother would say, God love him, but he's been dead wrong on the fundamental issues relating to the conduct of the war. Barack Obama has been right. They're the facts. Let's move on to Iran and Pakistan. I'm curious about what you think, starting with you, Senator Biden, which is the greatest threat, a, a nuclear Iran or an unstable Pakistan? Explain why. Well, they're both extremely, uh, extremely dangerous. Uh, I always have focused, as you know, Gwen, I've been focusing on for a long time, along with Barack, on Pakistan. Pakistan already has nuclear weapons. Pakistan already has deployed nuclear weapons. Pakistan's weapons can already hit Israel and the Mediterranean. Iran getting a nuclear weapon would be very, very destabilizing. They are more than, they are not close to getting a nuclear weapon that's able to be deployed. So they're both very dangerous. They'd both be game changers. But look, here's what the fundamental problem I have with John's policy about terror instability. John continues to tell us that the central war in the front on terror is in Iraq. I promise you, if an attack comes in the homeland, it's going to come as our, our security services have said. It's going to come from Al-Qaeda planning in the hills of Afghanistan and Pakistan. That's where they live. That's where they are. That's where it will come from. And right now, that resides in Pakistan. A stable government needs to be established. We need to support that democracy by helping them not only with their military, but with their governance as well as their economic well-being. There have been 7,000 madrasas built along that border. We should be helping them build schools to compete for those hearts and minds of the people in the region so that we are actually able to take on terrorism. And by the way, that's where bin Laden lives, and we will go at him if we have actionable intelligence. Governor, nuclear Pakistan, unstable Pakistan, nuclear Iran, which is uh, the greater threat. Both are extremely dangerous, of course. And as for who uh, termed that central war on terror being in Iraq, it was General Petraeus and Al-Qaeda, both leaders there, and it's probably the only thing that they're ever going to agree on, but that it was a central war on terror is in Iraq. You don't have to believe me or John McCain on that. I would believe Petraeus and that leader of Al-Qaeda. Uh, an armed 
nuclear armed, especially Iran, is so extremely dangerous to consider. They cannot be allowed to acquire nuclear weapons, period. Israel is in jeopardy, of course, when we're dealing with Ahmadinejad as a leader of Iran. Iran claiming that Israel is, he termed it, a stinking corpse, a country that should be wiped off the face of the earth. Now, a leader like Ahmadinejad, who is not sane or stable when he says things like that, is not one whom we can allow to acquire nuclear energy, nuclear weapons. Ahmadinejad, Kim Jong-il, uh, the Castro brothers, others who are dangerous dictators are ones that Barack Obama has said he would be willing to meet with without preconditions being met first. An issue like that, taken up by a presidential candidate, goes beyond naivete and goes beyond poor judgment. A statement that he made like that is downright dangerous because leaders like Ahmadinejad, who would seek to acquire nuclear weapons and, and wipe off the face of the earth, an ally like we have in Israel, should not be met with without preconditions and diplomatic efforts being undertaken first. Governor and Senator, I want you both to respond to this. Secretaries of State Baker, Kissinger, Powell, Crick Baker, they have, all, they have all advocated some level of engagement with enemies. Do you think this, these former secretaries of state are wrong on that? No, Henry Kissinger especially, and I had a good conversation with him recently, and he shared with me also his passion for diplomacy, and that's what John McCain and I would engage in also. But again, with some of these dictators who hate America and hate what we stand for with our freedoms, our democracy, our tolerance, our respect for women's rights, those who would try to destroy what we stand for cannot be met with just sitting down on a presidential level as Barack Obama had said he would be willing to do. That is beyond bad judgment. That is dangerous. No, diplomacy is very important. First and foremost, that is what we would engage in. But diplomacy is hard work by serious people. It's lining out clear objectives and having your friends and your allies ready to back you up there and have sanctions lined up also before any kind of presidential summit would take place. Senator. Uh, can, I, can I clarify this? That's just simply not true about Barack Obama. He did not say he'd sit down with Ahmadinejad. The fact of the matter is it surprises me that Senator McCain doesn't realize that Ahmadinejad does not control the security apparatus in Iran. The theocracy controls the security apparatus, number one. Number two, five secretaries of state did say we should talk with and sit down. Now, John and Governor Palin now say they're all, they have a passion, I think the phrase was, a passion for diplomacy, and that we have to bring our friends and allies along. Our friends and allies have been saying, Gwen, sit down, talk, talk, talk. Our friends and allies have been saying that. Five secretaries of state, three of them Republicans. And John McCain has said he would go along with an agreement, but he wouldn't sit down. Now, how do you do that when you don't have your administration sit down and talk with the adversary? And look what President Bush did. After five years, he finally sent a high-ranking diplomat to meet with the highest-ranking diplomats in Iran, in Europe, to try to work out an arrangement. Our allies are on that same page. And if we don't go the extra mile in diplomacy, what makes you think the allies are going to sit with us? And last point I'll make. John McCain said as recently as a couple weeks ago, he wouldn't even sit down with the government of Spain, a NATO ally that has troops in Afghanistan with us now. I find that incredible. Governor, you mentioned Israel and your support for Israel. Yes. What has this administration done right or wrong? This is the great lingering unresolved issue, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What have they done and is a two-state solution the solution? A two-state solution is the solution, and Secretary Rice, having recently met with um, leaders on one side or the other there, also still in these waning days of the Bush administration, trying to forge that peace, and uh, that needs to be done, and that will be top of an agenda item also under a McCain-Palin administration. Israel is our strongest and best ally in the Middle East. We have got to assure them that we will never allow a second Holocaust, despite, again, warnings 
from Iran and any other country that would seek to destroy Israel, that that is what they would like to see. We will support Israel, a two-state solution, building our embassy also in Jerusalem, those things that we look forward to being able to accomplish with this peace-seeking nation. And they have a track record of being able to forge these peace agreements. They succeeded with Jordan. They succeeded with Egypt. I'm sure that we're going to see more success there also. It's got to be a commitment of the United States.